A summer where many dreamed of freedom ended with the lives of three young men coming to an end that was due to hate. Stay tuned for more as I share a little history about the Freedom Summer Murders of 1964. Freedom Summer took place from June to August of 1964 with nonviolent civil rights protests aimed at integrating Mississippi's segregated political system. That summer, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and the Congress of Racial Equality recruited over 700 college students to help fight for equality in Mississippi. That summer, the major goal was to help African-American residents in Mississippi register to vote. That summer, they also established freedom schools, not only teaching history, but helping many understand the world of politics in efforts to establish a new political party. The first wave of students arrived June 15th in 1964, where they were instructed how poorly they would be treated by the police and to make sure that they had bail money in case they were arrested. In that first wave, three men, Michael Schwerner, Andrew Goodman, both white, and James Cheney, a local black man, were there to help with the efforts. Sadly, that summer, the Ku Klux Klan had went throughout Mississippi, burning down churches, and all three young men had come up missing after investigating the burning of a church in their region. This is where the news became worse when six weeks later, the beaten bodies of the three young men were found on August 4th. Many people knew it was the Ku Klux Klan who had murdered the three young men, but they were being protected by local police in an attempt to cover up the murders. Although state and local law enforcement did nothing, the FBI got involved and on December 4th, 1964, the Justice Department charged 21 men with conspiring to violate Schwerner, Cheney, and Goodman's civil rights. This is where the battle would continue because in January of 1965, 18 of those men were brought before presiding judge William Harold Cox, who dismissed most of the charges. It wouldn't be until 1966 that the Supreme Court would have to reinstate the charges due to Cox's prior decision. During the trial, details would come out about local law enforcement releasing the young man out of jail, knowing that the Ku Klux Klan were there forcing the young men into their car and eventually killing them. The jury would find seven of the men guilty, but none of them were found guilty of murder charges. They were sentenced to between three and 10 years in prison, where most would end up only spending no more than six years in prison. Making things worse, one of the men who was heavily involved, Edgar Ray Killen, went free because one of the jury members could not convict Killen because he was a Baptist preacher. Although these wicked men thought they would silence those fighting for equality, the events that took place with these three young men helped energize the nation. Although many in that region thought it was all over with, the main instigator walking away, after an interview from Samuel Bowers detailing how Killen was involved triggered the Mississippi Attorney General to reopen the case in 1999. After the FBI turned over more than 40,000 pages regarding the investigation into the three young men's murder in January 2005, Edgar Ray Killen would be charged finally with murder. Killen would go on to be found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to 60 years for his crimes. Those were just a few details from the Freedom Summer Murders of 1964 for students. I hope you enjoyed these interesting facts. Subscribe to our channel to get instant alerts when we share interesting facts from history here on Fresberg Cartoon.